like kart racing games, well, the Atari Jaguars got your back. Hey, I'm the Game Collector here, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today we do our review of Atari Karts for the Atari Jaguar. Second Opinion Games. One of the rarest and most valuable games on the Atari Jaguar's Atari Karts, and that's because the game is actually really good. You're not really racing against an AI, so let me get that out of the way right now. Instead, it's more try and finish as fast as you can, and the other cars just happen to be there. It does get a little frustrated because they just bump the crap out of you. If you don't do really well right off the start, sometimes you get bumped around like absolutely crazy. End up in last place and have to fight your way to the finish line in firsts. And sometimes that really can be a fight. Atari Karts does have multiple levels of difficulty. It does first start you off on the unbelievably easy setting, and then it gets a little bit harder each time farther, giving you a chance to sort of learn the tracks and the mechanics of the game. And you're really going to have to learn them inside and out when it gets to the top level of difficulty, because there is no room for failure. Also, take a look at those backgrounds. They're absolutely gorgeous, because when you're playing the game, you don't even really notice them there at all, because you're too focused on the road and winning the race. Overall, this game plays really well, especially with just the D-pad and the handful of buttons it uses. It does have pro controller support, but who the heck can afford one of those? I do know that the handling is a little bit better on the pro controller, as it has shoulder buttons that basically makes the turns a lot more serviceable. So, how's the game played? Well, race around the tracks as fast as possible, using the gas button and the brake button to handle corners with ease. The third button is for power-ups, which I recommend once you get the steering wheel power-up, just save it, because there's also power-downs, and some of them can be absolutely devastating like reversing controls. It's really not fun to get this because you pretty much always end up losing the race in the higher difficulties the second you touch it, even if you're really good at switching your controls on the fly. Also, the power-ups like the Speed Bunny makes you go really, really fast and sometimes makes you not do so well in the corners. So it's actually better off playing the game as if it has no power-ups. Get the steering wheel, Hold on to it so no other power-ups affect you, and just keep on racing. Maybe towards the end of the race, if you're starting to lose a little bit of your traction there, hit it then. But other than that, stay away from all the power-ups. Multiple characters to play with as well. The only one I really noticed here is Bentley Bear, and he's from Crystal Castles. Love that game. He's also the best to start off with. But once you start beating bosses, you get the boss's carts, and they are all major upgrades and pretty much a necessity for beating the higher levels. I think this red demon -y guy is the best, but you can also unlock Miracle Man if you beat the game. I really only had any problems with this game playing it on the setting Atari Aces. It's very difficult where you have to learn the tracks inside and out to play flawlessly. Play through the main tracks, and it unlocks the Miracle Race, where it's you against a boss. And this last race is horrible with these stupid reverse icons everywhere. Basically, the only way I found to beat them is you could jump over this huge section of track, and it makes a huge cheat, and I win that way. And then you get the credits, just like that. The game's over. Overall, I beat this game in about three hours of total gameplay. That's it for one of the most expensive games. But I did have a lot of fun doing it, and the game looks absolutely terrific. If you haven't noticed by some of the gameplay I showed, there's hills and everything, but those hills really don't affect the gameplay at all. They're kind of artificially added in there. In the options menu, you even have the ability to turn them off, and I usually do, because they kind of make me a little motion sick. Sound effects? The music's pretty good, and the effects are serviceable. 
The only spot where I really didn't care for the music that much is the scenes where it kind of shows you your score and everything felt a little somber for my tastes and I really think it should have been more upbeat there. Other than that, it was all just average. However, the graphics I believe are beautiful and if this game had a Mario theme and they called it Mario 64, I think it would have been a great game on Nintendo 64. The graphics I think hold up really well and overall, I think this game is top-notch. If I had a friend to play, two-player with, uh, I think this game would even be better. I do wish there was some weapons, though, to actually shoot the opponents, but this way, the focus is on driving, and driving well. If you're looking for not only a great racing game, but one of the best games on the system, get Atari Karts for the Atari Jaguar. It might fetch for a high price right now, but if you look around a bit, you could find a reproduction card for about $35. And for most collectors, that's just good enough. But that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching.